beginning. Come on, build this in here. Genesis, the 12th chapter. Genesis, the 12th chapter. I want to take you back to the beginning where God calls out Abraham. He calls him out and tells him to follow him. Before Abraham, there was no faith in the earth because everybody was an idolater. That's right. God comes to Abraham and he chooses Abraham to start the faith. The Bible says that Abraham is the father of the faith. He's our father in the faith. He's the beginning of Christianity. He's the beginning of what we have. There was no faith in the earth until Abraham was called out by God. God separates Abraham. Go down to um, verse number two. But I start at verse number one. Genesis, the 12th chapter, verse number one. We'll read down to verse number three. It says, Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, or excuse me, Abram, uh, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. There was no testimony of God in the earth. That Abraham was not a believer. He was an idolater. He had many gods. At this point in his life, he served many gods. He served the gods of his father. God comes to Abraham and says, Abraham, I'm God. He says, separate yourself from your kinfolk and follow me. I'm going to take you somewhere. He says, verse number two, and I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Why am I reading you God's conversation with Abraham? Abraham, because you are the seed of Abraham. Yeah. You are the offspring of Abraham. You are the heir of Abraham. Yeah. And so what we're reading right now, the conversation that God is making with Abraham, he is making with everything that is inside of Abraham. All of the children of Abraham, the children of faith, he's having the same conversation with them. And so when God says, Abraham, I'm going to make your name great, he was talking to Corey too. When he said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you and make you a blessing, he was talking to me because Abraham is the father of the faith. I was a descendant of Abraham. So everything that God is saying to Abraham right now, he said also to me. Yes. I'm a part of this conversation. I'm allowed to eavesdrop on this conversation because I'm included in the conversation. Everything that he said to my father right now, he said to me also. He says to him, he says, listen, and I will make thee a great nation. And I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Look at your neighbor and say, be careful how you treat me. Yeah. He said, you got to be careful how you treat Christians, because God says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. Can't just go through life treating people any kind of way, because you might mess around and run up on a child of God. with me. God says to Corbin, Corbin, I'm going to make your name great. Yeah. Now remember what I started the message off with. It doesn't matter what I offer you. If you don't receive it, it's not going to benefit you. So God can put all kinds of great promises in the word, but if you don't grab a hold of the promise that God is offering you, then it won't apply to you. God says to Brother Junior, Junior, I'm going to make your name great. Junior has to grab a hold of that promise and put that word in his mouth and start Corey, no man will be able to stand before you. All 
the days of your life. No man, it doesn't matter who he is or what he got, what title he has. He said, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. It, uh, you can't be a victim. He says, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. So wherever I go, God is with me. Yes. And whatever I do, the Lord is working yes. in me to accomplish what I'm doing. Yes. So I don't have to be afraid of men. I don't have to be afraid of what people say or do because the Lord is my life and my strength. He works on my behalf. Yes. Let me take you somewhere. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Psalms 23, very familiar. Yes. Very familiar. We all, a lot of us as children, we have to learn the 23rd Psalm. We had to learn the 23rd Psalm and remember, y'all have that? Amen. Go ahead and read if you have it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Stop right there. Listen to what the scripture says. The Bible says that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not walk. Amen. He has made me, maketh me past ten, mm -hmm. meaning he has put me here. Means I'm in the green pasture right now. Yeah. He's not taking me to the green pasture. Amen. I'm in the green pasture yeah. right now. Yeah. If you are a Christian, God is not taking you to the green pasture. The Bible is letting you know that right now you are in. You are in the green pasture right now. You don't have to look for green pasture because you are in it right now. He has made me to lie down well in a green pasture. Yes. I'm good place right now. Yeah. I mean, see, some of y'all say, one day I'm going to be in a good place. One day I'm going to get here, and when I get here, I'm going to be happy. One day I'm going to accomplish this, and when I accomplish that, I'm going to be happy. One day I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to serve God when I can get No, the Bible says he has made you right now to lay in a green pasture. You have to learn how to occupy where you are. Yeah. Yeah. Stop looking for the perfect day and be great wherever you are. Yeah. Stop looking for the perfect place and be great wherever you are. If you ain't got but so much, then take what you got and be great with it. Yeah. If you ain't got but this or that, take what you got and be great with it. Do great things with it. Do great things. See, we come. See, the, the, the older generation understand what I'm talking about because they can get in the kitchen and have a little bit of this and a little bit of that and feed the whole family. But the new generation, we got to have everything. We got to go to the store and buy everything in order. Some of y'all don't even know how to make gravy. <laughs> yeah, some of some of these, this, this new generation can't even make no gravy. Don't even got no flavor. Throw it away the grease. Don't throw it away the grease. That's the flavor. Take that grease and put that grease back in the pot. Get you a little flour and some warm water and a little bit of salt and mix, mix that thing. See, I, I, see, I know. My parents raised strong people. Yeah. Men and women. Yes. When I left home, I left home to be a man in a house. He says, I have made you to lie down in a green path. The point that I'm trying to get you to understand is where you are right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get you to see where you're standing. Yeah, yeah. Stop looking in the mirror. The mirror is lying to you. Uh -huh. Stop looking at your bank account. The bank account is lying to you. Yeah, yeah. Stop looking at what the check stubs say. Yeah. Your check stubs say is lying to you. Yeah. Your check stub does not tell you the truth about who you are. Yeah. It does not reveal the reality of who you are as a child of God. You have to learn how to look beyond what you see in the natural because there is another truth. There is another truth that this world will not show you but you find it in the word of God. It's greater than this world. Yeah, come on, come on. Finish that. that, that. Yes. Uh, he restored, oh, he leadeth me beside the still water. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name. His name. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, hey, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they come from me. Yes. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Jesus. Jesus. 
He says, he prepares. Yes, yes, yes. The table before me in the presence yes. of my enemy. Yes. I told my wife, she said me about somebody on a job, say, well, don't, 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 don't go away from me because you need some haters. Mm -hmm. Because God said he prepares the table in the presence yes. right in front of him. Right, right, right in the, right in front of the ones who lied. Jesus. Right in front of the ones who said you wouldn't make it. Right in front of the ones who threw the towel in. Yes. Right in front of the ones who tried to hold you by this shot on your neck. The ones who mistreated you. See, you, you, you got to understand something about God. You can't count the score until the game is over. Just because it look like I'm dying on me, I'm really dying. Yeah. 
month, year after year, week after week, month after month, we stay in the same place. No, you got to start seeing yourself better. You got to start seeing yourself stronger. You got to start seeing yourself wiser. You got to start seeing yourself closer with God. Look at what the Lord has done for me. Yes. Amen. The first chapter, yes. verses 3 and 4. Listen very closely to what we're about to read. You got a pen marking in your Bible so you can go back to it at a later date. Mm -hmm. First Peter, first chapter, verses 3 and 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again. Mm -hmm. God has begotten, that means rebirth. Uh -huh. God has begotten me again. That means I've been born again. That means who I used to work, I used to uh, I, I was at one time. I'm not him anymore. I've been begotten. I'm born again. So what I used to was, I'm not that anymore. I've been begotten again. He says he has begotten me. I have. Corey has been born again. Yeah. It's very important. I've been born again. See when you get born again, you get a whole new, a whole new. Oh God. Yeah, a whole new you. See, see, certain people, certain people are born yes. in certain families. Yes. And where you're born has a lot to do with your destiny. Yeah. It has a lot to do with your destiny. That's right. There are some people who get excited when their child goes to college. Yeah. Then there are some families that's not really a big deal. Yeah. Because everybody in that family goes to college mm -hmm. and graduates. The mama got a degree. The daddy got a degree, the grandparents had a degree. Mm -hmm. this, this is a family where education, everybody goes and finishes college. Yes. So it's only normal for this child to get up and go and finish college. But then there are some families that that's not normal. Mm -hmm. And so when you have one that go and make it, you are excited. Yes, you want to show out, you want to have a great time, you want to yeah. party, dance, and celebrate because this is something that's new yeah. to your family. Yeah. There are some families that used to money. Yes. They have money. They was born with money. Yeah. They grew up having money. Oh. It ain't no big thing to have money to them. They was born with money. Yeah. They, they don't have to wear their money on their outside That's right. because they are familiar with money. But when you're new to money, you have a tendency to try to show off the money yeah. because you ain't used to having money. Yeah. So you got to know where that, you got to let everybody know you got some money. Yeah. So when you go buy a purse, you don't buy a purse that got a little name right here. You got a purse with the name all over. You ain't used to money. Let me get the one with the seeds. Yeah. But somebody who used to money, they don't go buy no They think that's gaudy. They think that's over the top. They go and buy a purse, and the purse don't even look like what it is. I thought I was doing something big because I was buying my wife purses for $300, $400. I thought I was a man. Look, 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 look. I'm buying four hundred dollar purses. Stop it! Stop it! Until wait a minute. I, I went to a mall in Boca Raton, and I said I was gonna buy a purse, and looked at the tag, and the tag said ten thousand dollars. Woo! I said, Good God, from Zion, I'm in the wrong shop. This can't be the same coach. But some people, that's nothing to them. That's right. Yeah. Because they was, they, they, they 